Hello again, everyone. It's been a little bit of a break due to clouds, but I have some data going back to November of 2020 on the Heart Nebula, otherwise known as IC1805 or Sharpless 2-190. And it sits 7,500 light years from Earth in the Perseus arm of our galaxy. And it's an emission nebula and located in Cassiopeia. So in this video, I've got about 12 and a half hours of data and you'll see the process of uh, what I've done to capture it all coming up next. All right, this uh, quick uh, Part of the video I just wanted to show what a modification I did here and apologize for my Kermit the Frog sounding voice right at the moment. I've got a cold, not COVID. So hi ho, Kermit the Frog here. Uh, anyways, um, <laughs> uh, I used Flex Seal, a gallon of it. it Costs about $89 at Lowe's. You can see the Flex Seal here in the channel. It took about three days to really harden up. It's still kind of rubbery, so it has some give to it. Uh, you can see some of the darker spots where water still forms. I didn't quite have it aiming out enough, but I barely made it through that gallon. I have a tiny bit left that I'm going to use where the shutter is, and more on that in a second. But this worked out well. Any water that collects here is usually gone before the end of the day, and it's very little. But the biggest focus was here at the shutter. Try to avoid water collecting here and forming ice. This one didn't work out quite as well but it did work out such that water doesn't really form as much on the shutter um, the problem is I, I lowered the shutter and, it, and it's sink, sunk into the uh, flex seal it created an indentation that was more than I wanted I probably shouldn't have let it go down as far as I did I saw that some people did that but they probably didn't make it go down that far so I ended up with more of a dip here, so water does still collect right under the lip, but it also evaporated after two days of not using it. On a one-day situation, yeah, there was still a little bit of water in here, but not much was on the actual lip of the, of the shutter. So the hyperstar goes in place of this mirror here, which light comes into the telescope, bounces off of this mirror, then back to your rear end observing area, you know, like right now. I have it set up for planetary back here. So that that comes out of play. When you use the hyperstar, you put the hyperstar in place of this mirror, and all the light comes in and bounces back to the hyperstar and the camera that's on the hyperstar. All right, here it is with the outer ring taken off. Put a mark there that matches the notch. You wanna make sure that goes in the same spot when you put the secondary mirror back on after the fact later when you put it, take the hyperstar back off but for now take this portion straight out and that's your mirror and the hyperstar has a holder for it here's a look at the hyperstar before i install it you don't want to over tighten it however just to the point where it's snug and let it be at that point because you could cause damage to the telescope if you keep going right there that's it now you'll notice that we have these different adjustment we have these different adjustment uh, pins those are for adjusting tilt and also to rotate if you need to rotate the camera, that's how you do it. And it's been a while since I've done it, but I believe these ones are the rotation <coughs> screws that you can loosen up and then it'll rotate. And for the first part of the video, I'm going to do my filter wheel, the um, one of the quarter inch filters with the filter wheel, the mini filter wheel. And then the second part, I will switch it out to the filter drawer with the two inch filters. Still debating if I'm gonna go 
continue to use the filter wheel or not, it does work. But yeah, I'm going to compare images from one and a quarter to two inch and see if there's a drastic difference in quality for the same set of images, same duration, same count, and go from there. All right, here's a look at the filter wheel now, ready to go on. I have this piece of cardboard here to give it a rounded edge so when the light comes down through it doesn't look quite as square. You can get a 3D printout version of that that's a little bit better. I still need to do that, but it works okay for this arrangement. You're probably wondering why, because uh, in this case I'm using the, the uh, ASI uh, 294MC Pro color camera why I'm using a filter wear wheel in the first place? Well, it was mainly because I eventually wanted to switch to the 1600 monochrome and use the one and a quarter inch filters uh, for HA and, and so forth. So I wanted to see how well one and a quarter inch would work. And I've done this in the past. You can see some of my shots on online. Uh, but now I'm just finally trying to narrow it down to decide if I really want to still mess with the filter wheel or not and do a side-by-side -side comparison for this round. So now I'm going to attach it and uh, put the camera on and it'll be nearly ready to go. I have to balance out the back end, uh, take some things off the back and figure out what I did before to get it in balance. I think I had the F7 adapter on the back uh, to give it more weight. Maybe not. I don't remember. <laughs> I'll figure it out in a few minutes here and have it balanced and ready to go. All right, here's a look at after I've put the filter wheel on with the camera. I had to take the black spacer off of the camera to get the spacing right. This is a 24.5 millimeter spacer. Then we have the filter wheel. And to show that distance roughly, oh, this is a real rough approximation to where the six millimeters in is on the sensor here to the top of the hyperstar you want it to be 59.7 millimeters of back focus for the camera and that's right where we're at right there all right here's a look at the hyperstar now uh, that i've tied the wires down i'm using uh, velcro here painter's tape is great because it doesn't leave too much residue and it's easy to remove using that just to kind of keep that wire out of the direct line of sight 3D printed mount adapter here for the wires. I use painter's tape to keep this in place so that when I do flats, if I have to take the dew shield, which isn't on yet, um, if I take it on and off, I don't want this to move and change the flats arrangement in any way. So that's why the painter's tape is there. I have everything in balance now. And since I don't have a way to attach weights to the back end, since it's front heavy with the Hyperstar, I can only attach weights to the ADM adapter in the front when it's the reverse situation, but here for the Hyperstar I need more weight in the back. So I have two choices. One, I could slide the rail back further and that seems to affect my polar alignment every time I do that, so I don't want to do that. So instead I install the F7 adapter and I have a bunch of planetary arrangements here. Uh, there's an advanced Barlow in here and, and uh, uh, the camera 224 on here with the ZWO filter wheel, or ZWO um, ADC. And when you do all this, it balances out. Everything works. All right, all right, here we are again. This is later. I've put the filter drawer in place, taken out the filter wheel, and you can see the drawer there. Uh, let's try to get some better lighting here because it is dark now. I have the standard adapter now back on the camera, connected to the filter wheel, and then the 24.5 millimeter spacer, and then the Hyperstar version 3. The, uh, the drawer for the filters go in that way. And uh, there is the filter drawer for the 2 inch, and then they have a adapter for the one and a quarter inch so I can flip between one and a quarter and two without using a filter wheel. All right I've uh, shown this before um, this is the way you can line up your targets outside of Nino although Nina's framing wizard works really well too 
if you're a Stellarium user, you can find your target. So in this case, we're looking at the Heart Nebula. And hit enter, and it should take us right there. And there she is right now. Uh, if we zoom in, that's good enough. We can then click this icon up here um, in the top right. And you, you have to program all this in, of course, setting the right uh, focal lengths and so forth and the camera settings and pixel ratios and all that but I have it already set in for the Edge 11 and in this case the Hyperstar V3 and you can see the framing that comes up and that is uh, pretty close I think I, I adjusted the actual framing so that this went up a little higher so we got up to here and a little higher on the bottom <clears throat> that's where I use the uh, that's where I use the Nina framing wizard previously here. But back into into Nina in the sequence, this is how you um, add your target to the sequence. You just click this little button in the upper right, this little GPS button, and that brings it right in, pulls the RA declination, rotation, all that right in from uh, Stellarium and then you can adjust all the parameters. In this case, I have it set to start guiding uh, slew to the target, center of the target, and autofocus on start, temperature change every two degrees, and every 4% on HFR increase. And it's been rolling along. This is the second night. I've got, I had two hours from last night, and I'll have probably six tonight at least on this target. Yeah, working very well. And here it is. Ah, we picked up a, uh, I guess that would probably be a satellite streak in the image there. Been doing 120 second exposures. There was not much of a difference between 120 second and 180 uh, with the F2. Probably 90 would have been just as well too. Uh, but I don't seem to have uh, any saturation issues in 120 seconds. So I've been plugging away forward here. HFRs have been pretty good, around 2.7 ish. And uh, just my declination axis was a little imbalanced for some reason, but now it's it's getting about 0.80 for the guiding, which is good for a 60 millimeter guide scope. It's actually really good, and yeah, especially considering there's a half moon, half a sky away. Using the L enhance filter, one um, I'm using the two inch filter. Get a little bit more depth from that two inch than the one and a quarter, but one and a quarter would work just fine. As you can see from this video, this video set. And that is it, I think. Is there anything else? I don't know. Let me see. <coughs> um, here on the left hand side, you can see the focuser position for my Rigel N step knob focuser. Temperature right now at 6.50. Temperature compensation is turned on. It's fired off a few times for refocusing, uh, but not in quite a while now. It's not really showing up there on our graph in the bottom right for the HFR history. It usually shows the autofocus point. You can see it. Take a quick look at my Nina settings here for the sequence. For this 2 inch one, I'm running all night long. This is for a full blown set of images um, as you can see from the last shot I've recentered it using the framing wizard here you can load the image in here and then you can move the box around and click on recenter image and it will recenter based on where you put the box box representing the camera in this case the ASI 294 MC Pro so I've rearranged things so that I catch pretty much all of it the main area of the heart nebula the interesting part here is that um, the satellite streak, which I, th I thought was a satellite streak, if we come back to this frame here, these are two minute exposures. So here it is here, and then there it is there, and then there it is there. Over the course of four or six minutes the streak has slowly moved through the target 
Here's a look at my spike of flat. Uh, can't see it because the cover's on right now. Uh, I used the spike of flat with uh, several layers of, uh, I think it was shirts or curtains, I can't remember which. It's the only way with this ASI 294 camera and Hyperstar to get flats to be truly flat. I've tried shooting at the sky, that didn't work well. I tried shooting at the dome roof, had problems. The only way I could get this to work was by putting it on top of the dew shield here and using the USB controller for it and uh, setting the USB levels to really low numbers for certain filters, of course. And then, like I said, this secondary thing is covering the spike of flat up to prevent any light leaks. And I've uh, had pretty good success doing everything this way using the spike of flat.